Welcome to the Etnire series of operational and instructional videos. Um, this video that we're going to do today will be what we consider the walk around. The walk around will explain all the major components and their functions of the asphalt distributor. We want to make sure that we know a few things. One is that there is no asphalt or product in this tank. We will not be opening and closing valves in order to spray asphalt during this video. So the main gist of this video is to just get you familiar with a BT1 Etnire controlled distributor. So with that, we might as well start. If a person was going to fill the distributor, we have options of either filling from the top of the manhole or we would fill through our fill pipe here. This pipe is a three inch pipe that you would hook your loading hose to and be able to suck asphalt in through our asphalt pump into the tank. The pipe to its left is a discharge or transfer pipe. This pipe is where we would exit material from the tank, um, either into a storage tank or if we needed to pump back into a transport. To use this, we would use the controls to go into that function and then we manually have to open this valve in order to discharge material out of this pipe. Once that operation is complete, we can then close this valve and this valve becomes suction on the pump. So we would change the controls to the load feature we can then open this valve and that will put suction on your fill line so we can suck any remaining material back out of your load hose and put it back into our product tank. Then when you're done, simply close that valve and you're back to the beginning. The other valves as I go around here, one, this being a diesel valve, this valve here when it's open will allow diesel fuel to be sucked from our reservoir on the other side of the truck into our asphalt pump to be able to clean it out at the end of the day. One of the things about this valve is we want to make sure that it is only open during the flushing procedure. Otherwise it needs to be completely closed so we do not force asphalt back up this hose and into our tank while we're running the truck. These valves here are the hand spray valves. Very simple operating instructions on the back of the tank um, with the tag. It's as simple as when you want to hand spray, you move the valves over. When I'm done hand spraying and I want to suck back, I move the top valve back. And now I'm in the suck back mode for the hand spray. And when I'm done sucking the hand spray hose back, I would move the bottom valve back to the left in the, in the start position. So all of that is just your hand spray functions. While I'm here, I'd like to talk about the smokestacks or the flu tubes that we call them that go in relationship with the burners. Before the burners can be lit, we want to make sure that these dampers are open. And it's a very simple lift the lever and pull it open. That will open the flue so when we light the burners, they'll get good draft. Once you're done with your burner operation, we want to make sure we close those so we don't create a draft through our tubes. And then you can lock them down into place. Well, let's talk about what's down here on the truck. What we have on this frame rail is what we call our air solenoid valves, which will control all the air cylinders on the back of this truck. These hoses here will start from the middle of the spray bar and work themselves out all the way across the bar. The first few hoses right here will control your other air functions as far as your four-way valve, as your suction valve, your front suction valve, your suck back, and your power return valve are the first few hoses. Moving on over here, this is a bar latch. So when we raise our spray bar up, we can permanently latch it in place to take the pressure off the cylinders for traveling down the road. This that I have my hand on here is our bar carrying mechanism. It has stops at the bottom and stops at the top of a threaded rod. So we can lower this bar or raise this bar to any set position and we know that it's set correctly. The other function or portion of this is our swivel joints. We have four of them, two on each side of the truck. These swivel joints have a boot around them. And what that is is a ball and socket and it has an O-ring in it. So the boots are very important to be able to keep oil and chips off of that ball and socket so that we don't get in there and tear the O-ring and cause a leak. The union nuts on all distributors are there to tighten this pipe up. 
There's not a gasket behind there anymore. There is a brass washer. So if these would start to leak, we just need to tighten them up. We now put set screws on them. So once they're tight, we set the set screws and then they should not move from that point on.